the Sangha Dharma is primarily an issue of looking at yourself, looking at your own thoughts, your own words, your own deeds. Seeing what's skillful, seeing what's not. It's not so much an issue of self-improvement as it is action improvement, word improvement, and thought improvement. This is an important distinction. Because people in the modern world, especially in the modern world, seem to be obsessed with self-image, spent their lives bombarded with images. And you can't help but compare your image of yourself to the image of things you see outside you, the images of people you see outside you. And for the most part, there's no comparison. You're not as strong, you're not as beautiful, you're not as wealthy, on and on and on. I noticed in Thailand, as soon as television became predominant, became rampant in society, teenagers became very sullen. I think it's probably largely this issue of seeing themselves compared to the images that they see broadcast at them. And the whole question of self-image becomes very sensitive, very painful. So when we say that you're looking at yourself, remember you're looking at your thoughts, words, and deeds. Try to look at them as objectively as possible, get the whole issue of self out of the way. And then it becomes a lot easier to make improvements. The Buddha said there are two factors that most help the arising of discernment, that most help you along the path. The foremost internal factor is appropriate attention. The foremost external factor is admirable friendship. And it's important that we reflect on what this means. Because even though you are looking at your own thoughts, words, and deeds, you're also looking at the thoughts, words, and deeds of the people around you. After all, your eyes are fixed in your body, so they point outside. You can't help but see what other people are doing. So the question is, how can you make this knowledge most useful to yourself as you practice? And this is where the principle of admirable friendship comes in. To begin with, it means associating with admirable people, people who have habits, people who have qualities that are worth admiration. One of the basic lists is four. They have conviction in the principle of karma, they're virtuous, they're generous, and they're discerning. Now there's a well-known line from Dogen. He says, when you walk through the mist, your robe gets wet without you even thinking about it. It's his description of living with a teacher. You pick up the teacher's habits without thinking about it. But that's a double-edged sword, because your teacher has both good and bad habits. And you have to be careful about which ones you pick up. So in addition to associating with admirable people, the Buddha says there are two other factors in admirable friendship. One is that you ask the people around you about issues of conviction, virtue, generosity, discernment. Particularly, you choose the people who have those qualities. And it's not necessarily just the teacher, it can be other people in the community. And then if you see anything in them worth emulating, you, you emulate it, you follow it, you bring that quality into your own behavior. So this makes you responsible for your end of admirable friendship as well. You can't sit around simply hoping to soak up the mist and think that that'll be enough. You have to be active. Remember, there is that passage in the Dhammapada about the 
the spoon not knowing the taste of the soup, while the tongue does know the taste. But again, in looking at people around you, it's, it's important that you get away from that image of, okay, this person versus that person. You look at their actions, you look at their activities. Otherwise, you start comparing yourself to the other person. This person's better than I am. That person's worse than I am. And questions of conceit, questions of resentment, questions of competition come in. That's not really helpful, because we're not here to compete with each other. We're here to work on ourselves. So again, look at the person simply in terms of that person's thoughts. Well, you can't see their thoughts, but you can see how they're expressed in their words. Look at their words, look at their actions, and see what's an admirable action, what are admirable words, what are admirable ideas, ones that you can emulate, one that you, ones that you can pick up. In this way, the fact that we're living together becomes an help, a help to the practice rather than a hindrance. The same is true that when you notice that people around you are doing things that are not so admirable. Instead of judging the other person, simply judge the actions. That particular action, that particular way of thinking or speaking is not very skillful. And then turn around and look at yourself. The things that I do and I say, are those actions, are those words to be found in me? If they are, you've got work to do. So you look at the th behavior of other people as a mirror for your own behavior. In this way, the fact that we're living in a community becomes an aid to the practice. The Buddha designed the monkhood so that monks would have time alone, but also have time together. If you spend all of your time alone, you'd probably go crazy. Spend all of your time together. Life starts getting more and more like lay life all the time. So you'll have to learn how to balance the two. Learn how to develop your own good qualities on your own. And at the same time, use the actions and words of other people as mirrors for yourself. To check yourself. To see what's out there that's worth emulating. To see what's out there that you can clearly see as unskillful. And then reflect on yourself. Do I have those admirable qualities? Do they have those unskillful qualities in my thoughts, words, and deeds? And if you do, you've got work to do. And if you don't have the admirable ones, you've got work to do there. What's interesting that in both of these internal and external factors, both in appropriate attention and in admirable friendship, One of the factors is questioning. In other words, in, in appropriate attention, you learn how to ask questions about your own actions. In admirable friendship, you go and you ask other people you admire. If you find someone whose conviction is admirable, you ask that person about conviction. If you find someone whose effort or persistence are admirable, you ask them about persistence. In other words, you take an interest in these things. The things that we ask questions about, those are the things we're interested in. Those are the things that direct our practice. And it's a combination of the two, the internal questioning and the external questioning, that gets us pointed in the right direction. So this is something to think about as you go through the day and you see someone else doing something that gets you upset or something that offends you. Don't focus on the other person. Focus on the action in and of itself. And then turn around and look at yourself. If you create other people out there, you create a lot of problems. But if you simply see 
life in the community as an opportunity to watch the principle of cause and effect as it plays itself out, then the problems vanish. The same with admirable people. You don't get jealous of their good qualities. You don't get depressed about the fact that you don't have their good qualities. Where do good qualities come from? They come from persistence. They come from effort. They come from training, which is something we can all do. So again, if you see something admirable and it's someone else, ask them about it. And then try to apply those lessons in your own life. We go through life without asking questions, we learn nothing. If we ask the wrong questions, we go off the path. If we, with, with practice, we learn how to ask the right questions, then that's the factor that helps us. Get our practice right on target. I once read about a man reminiscing about his childhood. He said every day after school he would come home, and the mother's first question would be, what questions did you ask in school today? Didn't ask, what did you learn? What did the teacher teach? She asked, what questions did you ask? So at the end of the day, when we stop to reflect on the day's activities, that's the good question to ask yourself. What questions did I ask today? What answers did I get? That way you see which direction your practice is going.